Hey, welcome into a new thing I'm trying here at Woosh uh, called What Am I Reading? Part of the reason I decided to do What Am I Reading is I owe all of you recaps of the trades I'm reading to cover the Antihero 5k that I'm slowly doing. Um, it's five, well, it's 10 5ks, so it's a 5k challenge. Um, and I'm behind. So rather than do the weekly roundups, I thought doing a what am I reading and going over these would uh, help me catch up and deliver what I owe all of you. So with that, the first book I'm going to recap for you is a Winter Soldier related title. Uh, it's Ed Brubaker's 20... Two, well, 2004 uh, Captain America run volumes one and two where he brought in and introduced a character called the Winter Soldier um, yeah so we'll be discussing that all right so his Winter Soldier run slash Captain America run uh, went for quite a while went through some major events like House of M and Civil War um, but the very beginning of it is what I read and if you caught uh, my Terrificon video you saw that at Terrificon I picked up Captain America number six which was the first appearance of the Winter Soldier because I had previously met um, Sebastian Stan at Rhode Island Comic Con back in 2017 uh, it was been a while um, and I have a list going of uh, people I've met and the characters they've played first appearances so as kind of like a side challenge i try to keep up on that side note having uh captain america slash johnny storm for chris evans on there and daredevil on there for charlie cox makes it a very expensive list those two i might never achieve the list because of but that's okay um but the point of this is to to try to just see how one how many of them i can collect and whether i can do it kind of on a smart budget way so with that, let's go look at Ed Brubaker's Captain America run. Uh, the books themselves are really, really cool, really interesting. Um, one of the things I really liked was that they flashed back a lot to World War II. There was a lot of connections back to the missions Cap had done, Bucky being by his side, uh, and seeing all of those things. And they didn't shy away from the fact that they've gone back and they've retconned that a lot of the caps we've seen prior to um, him joining the Avengers and coming out of the, the ice were other people. Um, so they do a good job of staying very true to that. And it's cool to see kind of how that reflects in the story. With that being said, though, um, something I'm not quite sure I fully grasped was a lot of the history stuff i love history myself i consider myself to be a big big buff for world war one and world war two because the scale of those is so massive so in incredibly large that it's it's interesting to see how as a planet we've gotten to those points in the past and I always joke that the, the the First World War was called the Great War because everybody thought it could never happen again, and yet 20 years later it happened again. So, like, crazy to me the way society works sometimes. Um, and it's just it's bonkers. So it was cool, though, to see Ed Brubaker work that history and those facts and those things into his story um, because there are parts where Cap is teaming with uh, Russian soldiers and they reference... Um, traitors that are working for the not for the Nazi side or the the Germans now, and it's 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 a, it's a true part of history, and and one of the things that doesn't get talked about a lot with those is that like those people might have been serving Germany simply to get out of the the concentration camps and the horrible conditions, and I'm not justifying the actions to do that. But we know how deplorable the concentration camps were and all of that and how just mind-blowingly tragic the whole thing is. 
But Ed Brubaker put that into a comic book story. Small reference doesn't didn't necessarily go into the detail behind that, but went into those named those um, those soldiers that switched that were prisoners and worked and then ended up working for the Germans or um, the Axis. So that to me was one of those like comics have a deep, deep, deep connection to people and history in the world. And there's such a cool way of telling the world's history, even if it's in a snippet of a fantasy world or a made up world, like they're awesome. Uh, and I just thought it was really, really cool. And I loved the way Ed Brubaker did all of it. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, as for the story itself, we see in the first issue, Red Skull gets, gets assassinated by a bullet through a window in his penthouse apartment, essentially, because he has the cosmic cube and some, and, uh, turns out later on we find out a rush well hold on spoilers let me go back i know i spoiled red skull Ooh, my bad that's on me spoilers going forward for the run if you haven't read this 20 ish years later sorry um yeah so red Col red skull gets assassinated and then we find out later on that it was for a german operative who's literally just trying to use the cosmic cube to kind of ruin cap's life take over some of the businesses around him and then eventually he wants to get rid of it. Um, in the meantime, there's an assassin going around, murdering people, messing with tombstones for other Captain Americas or people that Cap worked with, like doing all of these things to connect everything back to Cap. And while that's going on, like the S.H.I.E.L.D. is there investigating, trying to keep it slowly under wraps. So Sharon is helping Cap. One of the things I thought was crazy, because I didn't read a lot of the cap leading into this run, but Red Skull is inhabiting a body that's a clone of Steve Rogers. That's crazy. Uh, also, the ultimate insult to injury for Cap, right? Like, Red Skull is sitting in your body without being in your body. Like, it's it's a total psychological thing. Really cool touch. Clearly, doesn't last very long because he gets killed in the first episode, but. They do need Cap to give a DNA sample to identify the body and confirm that it actually is Red Skull. Another weird, weird little quirk there. Um, eventually, we learn that the Winter Soldier is actually Bucky Barnes, you know, Cap's sidekick, who uh, they killed off in the comics because speculation is Stanley just didn't like teenage sidekicks or sidekicks at all anymore. So they, 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 they axed him. Uh, but they retcon it where Cap goes, when his unit was caught by Arnim Zola, I know they did some tests on him, and who knows, and then the reason why Bucky isn't older than Cap is because they t they realized with the psychological reconditioning they did for him, they had to only let him out for like six months or a year, put him back in uh, a deep freeze, and then pull him back out years later, do the reconditioning again, and kind of repeat that cycle. So Bucky eventually ages up closer to Cap, but isn't older than Cap, physically, at least. Um, it's really cool. I really enjoyed the run. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. Um, but the end, because Bucky doesn't remember anything because of all the psychological conditioning, so Cap actually uses the Cosmic Cube at the end of Volume 2 to restore Bucky's memories and his thoughts and his personality back to Bucky, and then Bucky disappears kind of similar to the ending we saw in Captain America the Winter Soldier so I thought it was pretty cool um, yeah overall I think I can definitely see the influences back to the MCU from it um, where they kind of pulled and picked some things to use for Winter Soldier to bring him in uh, in the MCU overall i thought it was a fantastic issue i really like i said i really loved the history the way they connected the history back the way cap was presented in the whole book the winter soldier twist where to be fair already knew it going in but it was still really well done in the book the the absolute torment of cap by going after the people closest to him and setting up people in ways that they were 
basically chess pieces I thought was very very well done uh, if you have a chance I highly recommend reading it if you do read it or if you have read it let me know in the comments did you enjoy it as much as I did would you have changed anything uh, what else do you, do you do you see the connections in the MCU do you think they could have adopted more from this storyline to bring it into the MCU let me know all of that down below in the comments uh, and we'll catch you here next time for what am I reading Thank you.